Abhay Karanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Abhaya Karanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Bengali Abhaya Karanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Sabami Prabhupada the 1st of September 1896 to the 14th of November 1977 was an Indian Hindu spiritual teacher and the founder preceptor of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness ISKCON commonly known as the Hare Krishna movement Members of the ISKCON movement view Prabhupada as a representant and messenger of Sri Krishna Caitanya Mahaprabhu, born Abhay Sharanda in Calcutta, he was educated at the Scottish Church College in Calcutta. Before adopting the life of a pious renunciant in 1950, he was married with children and owned a small pharmaceutical business. In 1959 he took a vow of renunciation and started writing commentaries on Vaishnava scriptures. In his later years, as a traveling Vaishnava monk, he became an influential communicator of Gaudiya Vaishnava theology to India and specifically to the West through his leadership of ISKCON, founded in 1966. As the founder of ISKCON, he "...emerged as a major figure of the Western counterculture, initiating thousands of young Americans." He received criticism from anti-cult groups, as well as a favorable welcome from religious scholars such as J. Stilson Judah, Harvey Cox, Larry Shin and Thomas Hopkins, who praised Bhaktivedanta Swami's translations and defended the group against distorted media images and misinterpretations. In respect to his achievements, religious leaders from other Gaudiya Vaishnava movements have also given him credit. He has been described as a charismatic leader, in the sense used by sociologist Max Weber, as he was successful in acquiring followers in the United States, Europe, India, and elsewhere. His mission was to propagate, throughout the world, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, a school of Vaishnavite Hinduism that had been taught to him by his guru, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati. After his death in 1977, Iskan, the society he founded based on a type of Hindu Krishnaism using the Bhagavata Purana as a central scripture, continued to grow. In February 2014, ISKCON's news agency reported reaching a milestone of distributing over half a billion of his books since 1965. His translation and commentaries of the Bhagavad Gita as it is is considered by adherents to the Iskan movement and many Vedic scholars as one of the finest literary works of Vaishnavism translated into the English language. Life Early life Born on 4 September 1896, the day after Janmastami, one of the most important Vaishnava holidays, in a humble house in the Taligunj suburb of Calcutta in a Bengali Suvarna Banik family, he was named Abhay Sharan, one who is fearless, having taken shelter at Lord Krishna's feet, since he was born on the day of Nandatsava, the celebration of Nanda, Krishna's father, a traditional festival in honor of Krishna's birth he was also called Nandulal. His parents, Sriman Gaur Mohanda and Sramati Rajunida, were devout Vaishnavas devotees of Vishnu. In accordance with Bengali tradition, his mother had gone to the home of her parents for the delivery, and only a few days later Abhay returned with parents to his home at 6 Siddhikanta Banerjee Lane, Kolkata 70005. He received a European-led education in the Scottish Church College, which was well reputed among Bengalis. Many Vaishnava families sent their sons there. The professors, most of whom were Europeans, were known as sober, moral men, and it is believed that the students received a good education. The college was located in North Calcutta, near the Des family home on Harrison Road. During his years in the college, Abhay Sharanda was a member of the English Society as well as that of the Sanskrit Society, and it has been suggested that his education provided him a foundation for his future leadership. He graduated in 1920 with majors in English, philosophy and economics. He rejected his diploma in response to Gandhi's independence movement. At 22 years of age he married Radharani Devi, who was then 11 years old, in a marriage arranged by their parents. At 14, she gave birth to Abhay's first son. Topic. Religious journey In 1922, when he first met his spiritual master, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Thakura, he was requested to spread the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the English language. In 1933 he became a formally initiated disciple of Bhaktisiddhanta. 
In 1944, from his front room at Sita Kanta Banerjee, Calcutta, he started the publication called Back to Godhead, for which he acted as writer, designer, publisher, editor, copy editor and distributor. He personally designed the logo, an effulgent figure of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the upper left corner, with the motto, Godhead is light, nescience is darkness, greeting the readers. In his first magazine he wrote, under the circumstances since 1936 up to now, I was simply speculating whether I shall venture this difficult task and that without any means and capacity, but as none have discouraged me, I have now taken courage to take up the work. In 1947, the Gaudiya Vaishnava Society recognized his scholarship with the title Bhaktivedanta, Bhakti Vedanta meaning, one who has realized that devotional service to the Supreme Lord is the end of all knowledge. With the words bhakti, indicating devotion and Vedanta indicating conclusive knowledge, his later well-known name, Prabhupada, is a Sanskrit title, literally meaning, He who has taken the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, where Prabhu denotes, Lord, and Pada means, taking shelter, also, at whose feet masters sit. This name was used as a respectful form of address by his disciples from late 1967 early 1968 onwards. Previous to this, as with his early disciples, followers used to call him Swamiji. From 1950 onwards, he lived at the medieval Radha Damodar Mandir in the holy town of Vrindavan, where he began his commentary and translation work of the Sanskrit work Bhagavata Purana. Of all notable Vrindavana's temples, the Radha Damodara Mandir had at the time the largest collection of various copies of the original writings of the six Gosvamis and their followers, more than 2,000 separate manuscripts, many of them 300, some even 400 years old. His guru, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Thakura, had always encouraged him to print books, and beholding his spiritual master, Abhay felt the words deeply enter his own life. If you ever get money, print books referring to the need of literary presentation of the Vaishnava culture. Renunciation The Gaudiya Matha at Allahabad, Uttar Pradesh was where he lived, wrote and studied, edited the Gaudiya Patrika magazine and where he donated the idol Murti of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu which stands on the altar beside those of Radha Krishna named Sri Sri Radha Vinodavaharaji. During his visit in September 1959 he entered the doors of this matha dressed in white, as a boy Babu, but would be leaving dressed in saffron, a Vaishnava renunciate sannyasi. He took his renunciate vows from his friend and godbrother Bhakti Prajnana Kashava. On becoming a sannyasa he also took the prenominal Swami, Swami, Swami. He single-handedly published the first three volumes covering 17 chapters of the first book of Bhagavata Purana, filling three volumes of 400 pages, each with a detailed commentary. The introduction to the first volume was a biographical sketch of Caitanya Mahaprabhu. He then left India, obtaining free passage on a freighter called the Jaladuta, with the aim and a hope of fulfilling his spiritual master's instruction to spread the message of Caitanya Mahaprabhu around the world. In his possession were a suitcase, an umbrella, a supply of dry cereal, about $8 worth of Indian currency, and several boxes of books. Topic. Mission to the West When he sailed to the United States in 1965, his trip was not sponsored by any religious organization, nor was he met upon arrival by a group of loyal followers. As the Indian freighter Jaladuta neared his destination, the magnitude of his intended task weighed on him. On 13 September he wrote in his diary, "'Today I have disclosed my mind to my companion, Lord Shri Krishna.'" On this occasion and on a number of others, he called on Krishna for help in his native Bengali. Examining these compositions, academics regard them as "'intimate records of his prayerful preparation for what lay ahead' and a view on how Bhaktivedanta Swami understood his own identity and mission. I do not know why you have brought me here. Now you can do whatever you like with me. But I guess you have some business here, otherwise why would you bring me to this terrible place? How will I make them understand this message of Krishna consciousness? I am very unfortunate, unqualified and most fallen. Therefore I am seeking your benediction so that I can convince them, for I am powerless to do so on my own. By journeying to the United States, he was attempting to fulfill the wish of his guru, possible only by the grace of his dear Lord Krishna. It was in July 1966 that he brought 
global missionary Vaishnavism to the Western world, founding the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in New York City. He spent much of the last decade of his life setting up the institution. Since he was the society's leader, his personality and management were responsible for much of ISKCON's growth and the reach of his mission. When it was suggested to him at the time of founding the ISKCON in 1966 that a broader term, God Consciousness, would be preferable to Krishna Consciousness. In the title, he rejected this recommendation, suggesting that the name Krishna includes all other forms and concepts of God. After a group of devotees and a temple had been established in New York, another center was started in San Francisco in 1967. From there, he traveled throughout America with his disciples, popularizing the movement through street chanting, sankirtana, book distribution, and public speeches. Once Iskin was more established in there, a small number of devotees from the San Francisco Temple were sent to London, England where they came into contact with the Beatles. George Harrison took the greatest interest, spending a significant time speaking with him and producing a record with members of the later London Radha Krsna Temple. Over the following years his continuing leadership role took him around the world some several times setting up temples and communities on other continents. By the time of his death in Vrindavan in 1977, Iskan had become an internationally known expression of Vaishnavism. In the twelve years from his arrival in New York until his final days, he circled the globe fourteen times on lecture tours that took him to six continents, initiated many disciples, awarding sannyasa initiations, introduced Vedic Gurukul education to a Western audience. Directed the founding of the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust, which claims to be the world's largest publisher of ancient and classical Vaishnava religious texts. Founded the religious colony New Vrindavan in West Virginia. Authored more than 80 books with many available online on Vedantic philosophy, religion, literature and culture including four published originally in Bengali. Introduced international celebrations such as Jagannatha processions. Watched Iskan grow to more than 108 temples, various institutes, and farm communities through his mission. He followed and communicated the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and introduced Bhakti Yoga to an international audience. Within Gaudiya Vaishnavism, this was viewed as the fulfillment of a long time mission to introduce Caitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings to the world. In his discussion with historian Arnold J. Toynbee in London, he is quoted as saying, I have started this Krishna conscious movement among the Indians and Americans and for the next 10,000 years it will increase." According to the most recent issue of Back to Godhead magazine, founded by Prabhupada, there are presently over 400 temples and farm communities listed to visit. The magazine lists only the major centers, there are many more homes turned temple that hold programs as well that aren't close by regular temples Back to Godhead. Prabhupada's initiated disciples and grand disciples number in the tens or hundreds of thousands, while millions of believers who accept his teachings as genuine and bona fide throughout the world. Bhaktivedanta Swami died on 14 November 1977 in Vrindavan, India. His burial remains in Krishna Balaram Mandir in Vrindavan, India. <laughs> Books and publishing It is believed that Bhaktivedanta Swami's most significant contribution are his books. Within the final twelve years of his life Bhaktivedanta Swami translated over sixty volumes of classic Vedic scriptures such as the Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamritan the Srimad Bhagavatam into the English language. For their authority, depth, and clarity, his books have won praise from professors at colleges and universities like Harvard, Oxford, Cornell, Columbia, Syracuse, Oberlin, and Edinburgh, and his Bhagavad Gita as it is was published by Macmillan Publishers, in 1968 an unabridged edition in 1972, and is now available in over 60 languages around the world and some other books by Bhaktivedanta Swami are available in over 80 different languages. In February 2014, ISKCON's news agency reported to have reached a milestone of distributing over half a billion books authored by Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Since 1965, the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust was established in 1972 to publish his works, and it has also published his multi volume biography, Srila Prabhupada Lilamtha, that according to Larry Shin will certainly be one of the most complete records of the life and work of any modern religious figure. 
Prabhupada reminded his devotees before his death that he would live forever in his books, and through them would remain present as a spiritual master or guru. Bhaktivedanta Swami had instilled in his followers an understanding of the importance of writing and publishing not only with regard to his works, but also their own initiatives. His early disciples felt Prabhupada had given them back to Godhead for their own writings from the very start. A prominent Gaudiya Vaishnava figure, Srivatsa Goswami, who as a young man had met Bhaktivedanta Swami in 1972, affirmed the significance of book publishing and distribution in spreading the message of Caitanya in an interview with Stephen Gelberg. Making these Vaisnava texts available is one of Srila Prabhupada's greatest contributions. Apart from the masses, his books have also reached well into academic circles and have spurred academic interest in the Chaitanya tradition. The significance of making these texts available is not merely academic or cultural, it is spiritual. Topic. Copyright claims In 1997, a legal dispute opposing ISKCON Inc. BBTI Bhaktivedanta Book Trust International to the sole trustee of Bhaktivedanta Book Trust at this time, Hansadutta Swami, ISKCON Inc. supported the position that Bhaktivedanta Book Trust was non-existent. In 1995 it was claimed by ISKCON that Bhaktivedanta's work was done as a work for hire. The litigation led to amiable arrangement after which books of Bhaktivedanta are being edited in mainly two forms, original work pre-1978, and work which has, since Bhaktivedanta's passing, been further edited, the later being the soul endorsed by Iskan. <laughs> Views on other religious traditions Bhaktivedanta Swami said, Actually, it doesn't matter, Krishna or Christ, the name is the same. The main point is to follow the injunctions of the Vedic scriptures that recommend chanting the name of God in this age. Other typical expressions present a different perspective, where he would point out that, Today I may be a Hindu, but tomorrow I may become a Christian or Muslim. In this way faiths can be changed, but Dharma is a natural sequence, a natural occupation or a connection and it cannot be changed, because it is permanent, according to him. While the Iskan theology of personal God is close to Christian theology, both personal and monotheistic, being a preacher of bhakti and a missionary he sometimes would add, that, "...already many Christians have tasted the nectar of divine love of the holy name and are dancing with karatalas hand cymbals and maridangas drums. His approach to modern knowledge is also seen in sectarian Orthodox Judaism, where the skills and technical knowledge of modernity are encouraged, but the values rejected. Bhaktivedanta Swami stated, "...devotees should not be lazy, idle less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 we are not afraid to work. Whatever our engagement is, by offering the result to Krishna we become Krishna conscious." Some of his representations are believed to affect women adversely and are male-centered, others are tender and celebratory. Bhaktivedanta Swami himself taught a dualism of body and soul and that of the genders. Similar to many traditional religions he considered sexuality and spirituality as conflicting opposites. Among some liberal male followers there is a positive recognition of his example in applying the spirit of the law according to time, place, person and circumstance, rather than literal tracing of the tradition. <laughs> Within India. Beginning his public preaching mission in India, he founded the League of Devotees in Jhansi in 1953. Following the establishment of temples and centers in the United States and Europe, he returned to India in 1971, holding many public programs which were well attended. From 1971 onwards, the movement became increasingly popular and spread throughout India. He was particularly eager to see the progress at the impressive temple project in Mumbai which he and his disciples had fought very hard to establish, with large temples in Mayapur and Vrindavan to follow in the mid-1970s. To promote the Vedic education system within the modern Indian education structure, he introduced a chain of Gurukul in various part of India. The Bhaktivedanta Gurukula and International School is one of the most successful schools in the list. 
In 1996, the Government of India recognised his accomplishments by issuing a commemorative stamp in his honour as a part of Prabhupada centennial celebrations. Speaking at the inauguration of ISKCON's Cultural Centre in New Delhi on 5 April on the occasion of Ramnavmi in 1998, Adil Bihari Vajpayee, then India's Prime Minister, said, if today the Bhagavad Gita is printed in millions of copies in scores of Indian languages and distributed in all nooks and corners of the world, the credit for this great sacred service goes chiefly to Iskan. For this one accomplishment alone, Indians should be eternally grateful to the devoted spiritual army of Swami Prabhupada's followers. The voyage of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada to the United States in 1965 and the spectacular popularity his movement gained in a very short spell of 12 years must be regarded as one of the greatest spiritual events of the century. Monuments <inaudible> 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 A number of memorial samadhis or shrines to Bhaktivedanta Swami were constructed by the members of Iskan in his remembrance, the largest of which are in Mayapur, Vrindavan and at the larger sized temples in America. Prabhupada's Palace of Gold was designed and constructed by devotees of the new Vrindavan community and dedicated on 2 September 1979. Back in 1972 it was intended to be simply a residence for Bhaktivedanta Swami, but over time the plans evolved into an ornate marble and gold palace which is now visited by thousands of Hindu pilgrims each year, visiting this centerpiece of the community strongly relying upon tourist trade. Bibliography Translations with commentary Bhagavad Gita as it is 1968 ISBN 0-89213-134-9 Sri Isapanisad 1969 ISBN 0 89213 280 9 77 ISBN 84-86883-07-5 Vols Caitanya Karadamtha 1974 ISBN 0 912776 501 Vols The Nectar of Instruction 1975 ISBN 0 912776 85 4 Topic Summary Studies Teachings of Lord Caitanya ISBN 0-912776-07-2 Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead ISBN 0-89213-354-6 The Nectar of Devotion ISBN 0-912776-05-6 other works published within Prabhupada's lifetime Easy Journey to Other Planets 1970. Krishna Consciousness, The Topmost Yoga System 1970. Beyond Birth and Death 1972. The Perfection of Yoga 1972. Kresna, The Reservoir of Pleasure 1972. On the Way to Kresna 1973. Raja Vidya, The King of Knowledge 1973. Elevation to Krishna Consciousness 1973. Krishna Consciousness, The Matchless Gift 1974. Perfect Questions, Perfect Answers 1977. Teachings of Lord Kapila, The Son of Devahuti Topic. Bengali Writings Gitar Gan Vairagya Vidya Buddhi Yoga Bhakti Ratna Boli Topic. Published posthumously Light of the Bhagavata OL1133766662 W Teachings of Queen Kunti ISBN 0-89213-102-0 Life Comes from Life 1978 OL8622511 WISBN 0892131004 Search for Liberation OL1998508W 1981 
Chant and Be Happy 1982 OL1539759 WISBN 0 18913 Coming Back: The Science of Reincarnation 1982 OCLC 495474079 ISBN 0892131144 Dialectic Spiritualism OL8622518 W 1985 Path of Perfection 1989 OL2089579 WISBN 0892131039 Narada Bhakti Sutra 1991 ISBN 0 89213 273 6 Mukunda Mala Stotra 1989 OL1058156 WISBN 0-892132752 The Hare Krishna Challenge OCLC 34455353 a Second Chance OL2089576W 1991 The Journey of Self Discovery OL1514394W 1991 Laws of Nature An Infallible Justice 1991 OL4101128WISBN0892132728 Renunciation Through Wisdom 1992 Quest for Enlightenment 1993 The Nectar of Book Distribution 1993 The Path of Yoga 1995 Message of Godhead 1996 Civilization and Transcendence 1998 ISBN 0892132981 Dharma The Way of Transcendence 1998 Srila Prabhupada Slokas 1998 Beyond Illusion and Doubt 1999 Introduction to Bhagavad Gita 2005 A Shower of Divine Compassion 2008 Collected Lectures on Bhagavad Gita as it is 7 volumes Collected Lectures on Srimad Bhagavatam 11 volumes Collected Teachings of AC Bhaktivedanta Swami 7 volumes Conversations with Srila Prabhupada 37 volumes Srila Prabhupada Siksamtha 3 volumes Srila Prabhupada's letters 5 volumes The Pioneer Years Back to Godhead 1944 to 1960 The Jaladuta Diary The Spiritual Master and the Disciple The Beginning the 1966 New York Journal Sri Namamtha the Nectar of the Holy Name Srila Prabhupada's Original League of Devotees Srimad Bhagavatam reprint Topic. See also List of International Society for Krishna Consciousness Members and Patrons Topic. References Sources Topic. External links Official online multilingual library of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada at Kurli Works by or about A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada at Internet Archive